Hair falling out while using a GLP-1 medicine? Well, listen up, because I'm going to give you my tips and tricks to stop it and or reverse it. Hey, I'm Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, a triple board certified obesity physician who's overseen tens of thousands of patients and has had thousands of patients myself with hundreds of my own patients who have gone through issues with their own hair loss journey with these medicines. Today, I want to go over my tips and tricks on how to stop slash prevent and even reverse your hair loss if you're taking one of these medicines. So first and foremost, if you look at the surmount one data, which was looking at terzepatide for weight loss in those with obesity, the data only show around about 5% of people have this hair loss or alopecia as they report it in their data. Now, clinically, I see it more around 10%. So I don't know how they're asking the patients these questions or if the patients didn't report it. But after working with many people, I have about 10% of my patients report some sort of hair loss. Usually they're going to their hairdresser or the barber if they're a guy and they're saying, hey, you know, your hair is really thinning out here. Or sometimes they're in the shower and they're noticing more clumps of hair coming out when they're combing their hair or washing it. Now to be clear, with any type of weight loss, there can be hair loss. There's something called telogen effluvium, which is basically a stress-induced hair loss that occurs when you are losing weight. In general, when you're done losing weight, this stops and your hair grows back. However, patients could be quite self-conscious if they're losing a lot of hair and it could be disturbing to them. So we want to help them prevent it and of course reverse it if we can. There is a thought that it's not all from the weight loss though, as I do have some patients who take the medicine who don't lose a lot of weight, but they're losing a lot of hair. I don't think any mechanism has been shown in any of the studies, but it's something to look out for. Now, before we even had these medicines, we do have studies with people trying to lose weight, whether it's diet and exercise by itself or with bariatric surgery, showing people were losing their hair when they went through these journeys. So the most likely mechanism is the weight loss and potentially there's some nutrient deficiencies that can occur. So the first thing I do when a patient says, hey doc, I'm losing my hair, it's starting to get really thin, my barber or my hairdresser has noticed it, what can I do to help? So the first thing I do is talk about the severity. Are they feeling really bad about about it, self-conscious about it. Is it really noticeable? You know, I do a lot of telemedicine and I'm looking at their hair. And I'm like, man, your hair is thicker than mine, thicker than people that I know. You look pretty good. But if it's disturbing to the patient, obviously I want to discuss with them in detail. So first thing is severity. If it's really bad, we want to obviously address it. If it's not so bad, we just kind of monitor it. The next thing I do is ensure they're getting adequate amounts of protein, vitamins, and minerals. When you look at the bariatric surgery data, there are some minerals and vitamins that can be lacked, may be related, that go beyond the weight loss. Luckily, at Vineyard, my online clinic, I have amazing dietitians who do a very detailed report of how many nutrients people are getting in, and we ensure that they're at least taking a multivitamin and mineral supplement. A lot of people online, are taking the supplement Nutrafol because of the viral ads that they're seeing on TikTok and wherever else. They do have some randomized trials looking at placebo versus the Nutrafol supplement, but honestly, I don't think there's any data to show that it would do any better than a multivitamin and mineral. In fact, some of the extra biotin that they put in there can really screw with the thyroid labs where it looks like someone has hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease. Your TSH can be really low and your free T4 and free T3 can be really high just because you're taking the supplement. So that can be something you want to monitor if you're taking one of these high hair vitamin and mineral supplements. I think at least take a multivitamin mineral, making sure you're getting enough protein. We like to shoot for at least one to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if you weigh about 220 pounds, which is 100 kilograms, you're getting around 100 to 120 grams of protein per day. The next thing I do is obviously I do this with all my patients. I look at the rate of weight loss. So I've talked about this before, but above about 1% total body weight loss per week increases your risk of gallstones, muscle loss, and also things like hair loss. So let's say you're 200 pounds, let's keep it easy, and you're losing on average more than two pounds a week, you may want to slow it down a little bit. This means you have to eat a little bit more, which may mean you have to go down on your dose a little bit if your appetite is too suppressed. The other thing I discuss is that usually once you go to maintenance. That telogen effluvium, that weight loss induced hair loss goes away. Now, the issue is not everybody's hair loss goes away. They can still stay thin. So this is where obviously I'd step in with other therapy that I'm going to talk about in a second. But some people have it so bad where they don't want to really wait for going to maintenance. They don't want to wait that long. It's getting really bad and they're feeling self-conscious and bad about themselves. So that's where we'd step in with this medical intervention. So first step, obviously discuss the severity, then go into the vitamins, minerals, and protein 
protein, look at the rates of weight loss, and then talk about that maintenance, whether they can wait till maintenance or not. Once you've addressed all that, then you start talking about medical intervention. And so the best drug we have for this would be minoxidil. Now, usually people start with topical, you know, the Rogaine stuff, you can put foam or some other a sort of spray or liquid in their hair. Usually it's a twice a day type of formula to have any effect. I will say most people hate doing that. It's oily, sticky, and kind of gross. So most people end up doing oral minoxidil. Now this has become very popular online. You can go to all the different clinics. They're selling it online for way too much. I do it for all my patients at Vineyard. It's really cheap. It's generic. First starting dose is 2.5 milligram tablets, but I have them take just a half of a tablet as 1.25 milligrams is effective in this that I've seen. I think I need to do a trial, but when you look at regular hair loss uh, trials, the 1.25 milligrams orally can be very effective for hair loss. The issue with minoxidil is that some people can have their blood pressure go down. It is a blood pressure drug, even though we're using a very low dose. So in people that already have really low blood pressure from taking the medicine, you obviously want to address their other blood pressure medicines, may have to take them off of them. Or if they're not on those, you really got to make sure people are monitoring their blood pressure because otherwise if it gets too low, you can get really dizzy when you're standing up, you can black out and that type of thing. And the way I start this off is yeah, that half of a tab of the 2.5 milligrams, so 1.25 milligrams, and just give them a 90-day supply. I actually reassess them after three months. I have yet to see anybody not have results on this. Again, we do need to have a trial. Maybe I'll do that someday unless somebody else is doing it right now. But 1.25 milligrams, obviously talk with your own doctor, talk about your own blood pressure and the other side effects. Some people can gain a little bit of weight from fluid from the medicine. I haven't seen that on any of my patients. I have close to 100 patients on this medicine right now with fantastic results. One thing also to note about the minoxidil, it's one of these medicines you have to keep taking forever. And once you stop the medicine, a lot of that hair can just shed and go away again. So it's something to consider if you want to not be on another medicine for a long term. Like I said before, I have dozens of patients on this, close to about 100 women and men on this medicine, minoxidil, and they're having very good results. Always talk to your doctor before doing anything like this. I do think we need a trial looking at placebo versus the medicine, but nothing else has worked when it comes to lifestyle, then you start thinking about going to this pharmaceutical minoxidil drug. And if you want to become a patient of ours at Vineyard, of course, we would take care of you and make sure you got everything you needed, including all the nutrient and protein deficiencies taken care of with our dietitians. And then if you needed, our doctors would look after you and supply you with some minoxidil if it wasn't contraindicated or a reason you couldn't take the medicine. Hope this information helped. If you thought it helped, make sure you share it with a friend, family member, or someone else on the internet who's going going through the struggles of hair loss using these medicines. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more information on the GLP-1 medicines or about obesity and weight loss in general.